Yo, Kippus Guy here. Hey, so I made some videos called Mini DSP where I hooked up my Mini DSP to my system and calibrated my subs. I'm running a current three right now and I've decided to sit down and actually get my subs running together, giving me the best total output and the smoothest response that I can. There was one big issue in those videos that I didn't address in those videos that we need to take care of right now. In those videos, we are putting our subs together. We are running each sub individually and seeing its characteristics inside my room. And then we were seeing all together the total sum of what the subs are doing when all three are played together. And we noticed one thing, and even some of you guys mentioned it in the comment section, where the lower end of my graph, where the low base is, the 30, 40 hertz range or lower, one sub was carrying a lot of the weight compared to the other two subs, which is an issue. And so the problem that we're having is that even though my line ended up being a pretty smooth line, one sub was carrying a lot of the low end and then the other two subs were kind of doing, you know, upper bass or mid bass frequencies and it was looking good on the graph, but that's not what we want. We don't want one sub to be doing a lot of the low end work and the other two aren't really being you know heard that's an issue and so in this video today we're going to talk about why that happened and then what i'm going to do to fix it and this will probably be a, a current or, or a concurrent theme going on with your room too you you probably have the same issue and don't know it so let's get into it all right guys so this is a snippet from the mini dsp video that i was making at the time of my subwoofers and this orange highlighted line that we're looking at now is my overall room response before i was finished with calibration this is what all three of my subs were doing in my room which looks great pretty decent line a couple dips not too bad we can fix these right so a pretty smooth response but here's what the problem was I measured each individual sub here. Take a look at the green sub first. This is my front right sub. This is the only sub that's in the front. It's between my center channel and my right speaker. And it's giving me a pretty good response up there. It's truly not bad. A couple of dips we had to fix, but I had a really good starting point. Not bad at all, great. If I move to the next subwoofer, this orange one now that's highlighted is my sub that's in the ceiling. And take a look at the lower frequencies and how much softer it is compared to the green sub, the sub in the front. We're about on average 15 decibels quieter between 10 hertz to 40 hertz. So my front sub is doing a lot of the work. My in ceiling sub is not really doing much for me in those infrasonics. Check out the blue sub. This sub is the sub that's behind me. This is a near field sub. This one's the worst. It has almost no audible output on those low frequency notes between 10 and 40, but it goes up tons of dB. I'm getting a lot of pressure, 40, 50, or whatever. I'm getting nothing between 10 and 39 Hertz. It just drops off a cliff. Here's what the problem is. Even though my line overall looks pretty good to start with, there's only one sub really giving me bass between 10 and 40 hertz, and that's my front one. And the problem with that is that, let's say I wanna crank up the bass one day, I wanna you know, give a little more infrasonics in a movie, I'm demoing, maybe I wanna listen to loud music. If one sub is doing half the work, then we're overworking our sub to the point where we could cause damage. Or maybe we think our other two subs are helping and they're not. So when we crank in, we're cranking our volume, thinking we have all this headroom and we don't. We're actually just working one sub, or we're working all subs really hard, but only one sub can actually be heard. And it makes having three subs pointless. We need to fix this. Again, look at this blue sub. It's doing nothing. Well, at least in my seat it is. So how do we fix this to make this blue sub, the one in the back, more in line with the one in the front? Of course, we can look at phase and things like that. That's not an issue because this is just one sub singular. This is not all three. This is just it by itself. The problem here is placement. We need to make this placement right so that our orange line is with all subs doing their best work. This blue sub has to move. So I have kind of an idea. My front right sub again is between center channel and right speaker. And I've done some placement and I've learned that anywhere I put my sub across this wall, the graph is relatively the same. There really isn't truly a difference 
between the right side and the left side of the front wall. It all kind of sounds the same. So my theory is, is that my placement of my rear sub is terrible and that I need to move it. And I think bringing it up here will do it justice. Again, I am very aware that my rear sub can play low frequency bass. There's not a doubt in my mind. I've seen it do it. But the fact that it's not it's not representative on the graph tells me that in my seat versus where it's located, where we, we, we're sitting in a null or my subwoofer is in a null spot where it's not going to reach my seat the way that it needs to. I think if I move it up front, it'll play better with the rest of the subs and I'll get more of that bass output. So we're gonna refer to this line right here. I'm gonna save this line and screenshot it and we're gonna move my sub and then measure this sub in this spot and see what the line looks like. And then I'll take some time on my own to measure all the subs again and see if my orange line looks better overall. All right guys, so I have spent the last hour and a half pretty much recalibrating my subs. And so I'm gonna recap everything. So again, this is what my sub was doing in the rear in its you know, previous placement, just behind the listening position. Wasn't doing well, wasn't keeping up with the low bass that my other sub was putting out. So it's now in the front left next to the subwoofer that was doing well in the front right. So now they're kind of in a, in a similar placement. So here's again what it looked like, and I'm gonna go find it here. And here's what it looks like now, just moving it. So here is what it looks like just moving it compared to the rhythmic sub already there, much closer. We were about, I don't know, 15, 20 dBs lower than the subwoofer um, that was giving me the most output. Now that I've moved it to a better location, I've gained almost 10 decibels or so of output. Now we're more in line with that other sub. Now they're not exactly the same subs. They are slightly different, so they're not gonna perform exactly the same, but to go from like negative 20 dB comparison to just about negative 10 or so, maybe just a little bit less than that, that's a game changer. That's a lot more bass output now. So now my line, if I compare, I'll put on the screen the old one versus the new line. It's so much better. Um, we have a much better bass response with all subs together. So this is now my front right sub, the green. The blue is my front left, how it is right now. And then my in ceiling is still all over the place, <laughs> but we've cleaned that up, right? So now, let me click all of this. After a little bit of EQing and everything, this is now my front left sub versus this, okay? So this bottom blue line, maybe purple to you on your screen, this bottom blue was just moving it into a new position. This purple line up top is now moving it into position and then getting the EQ correct, kind of making some changes so that boosted a lot of low bass that I was missing. So now if we compare this line to the rhythmic, check this out. Now we're actually getting on average more output from that sub that was at once getting 20 decibels less of output in the low frequencies. It's almost even now. So just moving it and then getting it all kind of configured, now we're in a better place. So if I click off of these now, let me, I didn't mean to zoom in like that. If I go down to all my subs together, I think it's this one here. Let me zoom back in, move it over. So now my subs look like this. All of them are now EQ'd, or excuse me, all of them are now time aligned. This is my new subs level matched and time aligned. Still not great, right? So now I added EQ and this is what my subs look like now. The green line is all my subs turned on, time aligned, level match. They are a lot better than where we started. Where we started was actually this red line here. This is with no EQ at all. It was a little bit all over the place, not too bad. But after smoothing it out, getting rid of some of those knolls and some of those peaks, we are much smoother. So we went from a very bad performing front left speaker to a much better. This is where it started, just moving it. This is where it is 
after kind of playing around with it a little bit. And then when we put all of them together, we get a nice, smooth response. This is now my response for my subs in my room at this current volume level. It's not turned up very loud. It's only at negative 33 and a half on the volume knob here. So we're getting a very nice response here. All of my settings look good. If I go to the mini DSP here, this is the parametric EQ that um, Room EQ Wizard added for me. This is a very smooth response overall. And then here's my settings that I have here. So I have my own PEQ applied to the Rhythmic itself, and then I overall equalized everything. I don't have any delays set on any of my speakers because all my speakers are more towards the front now. So there really wasn't any benefit for adding any delay. It actually made things worse, adding delay to any subs. And then here's my volume levels here, negative four, negative four, 12, because my ceiling speaker is so far away. Um, so it's at 12, but it's not maxed out on the amplifier. So negative four, negative four, 12, and six, that is what resulted me in getting about 78, 79 dBs. I didn't do 75 dBs for my subs. I like them a, a little bit hotter than the rest of the system. So they're calibrated to 78 decibels, and that's what you get here. And then all of my phases are zero or normal or untouched, essentially. That's what the invert is. None of my subs are inverted. They are all playing the same thing at the same volume at the same time, and all of them are in phase with each other. So now my job is to go into Anthem Room Correction and run that all over again, get it calibrated with my main speakers. So I'm gonna run a new um, calibration file, and then I'll show you that final calibration um, with everything done. All right guys, so just finished running room correction. I haven't ran a measurement yet, but this is gonna be my final measurement with my EQ, my time alignment, my phasing, and then our room correction applied to it. Let's see what our final sub output looks like. All right, so room correction is the blue. Looks like we added 0.6 decibels, and it looks like it didn't change too much. So it didn't, Anthem didn't really take over the subs a whole bunch. Actually, it may have made them slightly worse in some regards. They're a little bit bigger of a dip here towards the end, but it is what it is. This is, tip, this is basically my final graph here. Of course, towards 60, 70 or whatever, the speakers start to you know, play in this range. My cutoff is actually at 80 hertz, but they do play LFE up to 120 hertz. But this is my final line. And now my sub that was once a huge problem looking like this, now looks like this. And all together, it now looks just like this. So just moving my sub to one, play, one different place in a room made a 10, 15 dB difference for, for me. And then time aligning it, making sure they're all in phase for each other, got me a graph like this. So just moving your subs and putting them in the right or wrong places can drastically change the performance of them. You may think your sub isn't performing very good or why is it not very loud? Why is there not much bass? It may not be the sub. You may not be able to run calibration and fix it. Sometimes you just simply have to move either the sub or your seat to make things work. And in this case, I had to get it from where it was to where it is now, and now I have basically a whole new sub. I just pretty much just bought a new sub basically just by moving it to a new place. It's a whole different performance now. So really cool, hope you guys learned a little bit from this video. Of course, leave me some comments down below. Let me know some of your feedback. Tell me a lot of things. I don't know everything, but a lot of you guys are very experienced. So tell me your thoughts on this. Tell me your take on placement, on running Room EQ Wizard. How did you guys make sure your subs are running in tangent with each other? Let me know that down below in the comment section. Hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already, and we'll see you guys in the next video. K-Pace guy out. Peace.